Aloha! This is Pipeline Audio with a tutorial on getting started in Reaper. Introduction to Reaper's multi-channel routing system. For this tutorial, I am overjoyed to talk about a subject near and dear to my heart. One of the holy grails of audio mixing. If you're an old hardware and console tape head grumpy curmudgeon like me, you've been missing something on your native DAW. You've probably been screaming about it to anyone who will listen and even louder to those who won't. I'm talking about flexible routing, like a patch bay, like a screwdriver to put gozintas and gozoutas in your gear where none existed. Reaper OT964 brings you multi-channel routing. This means side chains, finally, and not the one-off proprietary stuff you've likely run into before. Serial and parallel routing schemes that you miss from your old multi-effects processor. The possibilities are astounding. If you can draw it out, Reaper can probably do it. So let's get to patching. I'm going to start with the popular kick drum, side chains, bass guitar trick. First start a new project. Insert two tracks. Name track one kick and track two bass. What I want to do is send a signal from the kick track to the detector input of a compressor, in this case recomp, residing on the bass guitar track. The idea here is that every time the kick hits, It'll turn down the bass for a short time in order to keep the two sounds from muddying each other up. This will make the kick sound like it's playing the bass and can be an excellent way to quickly appear to tighten up sloppy tracks. One of the important conditions here is doing it in a way without disturbing the regular flow from the kick drum track to the main stereo output. Reaper's sidechaining system will let us do that. First I'm going to set Recomp to listen to input 3 while the regular top stereo input audio goes through the compressor as it normally would. With signal 3, in this case the kick drum from track 1, being only for the control signal or key input to the compressor's detector. In the drop down box next to signaling input on Recomp, choose channel 3. Next, right click track 2's volume fader and you'll see some new faces. Next to the text labeled Track Channels is a drop-down box. Here you will set the number of signals that can potentially pass through this particular track. We know we're going to need the regular stereo chain of yesterday, plus another input for the kick to the side chain. Reaper sets these channels in stereo pairs, so choose four channels. Now go to Track 1, click the I.O. button, and create a Send to Track 2. Right-click Track 1's volume fader. Underneath Send 2, you'll see two new drop-down boxes. The left drop down allows you to specify which channels of the send track are to be sent. On the right drop down, you choose which channel numbers the send will be on the receiving track. Sounds harder than it really is. Here's how simple it works. Choose 1 and 2 on the left drop down as you just want the kick to send. Choose channel 3 on the right drop down since that's the channel you're using for the signaling input to track 2's compressor. And that's it. You'll pull this off in less time than it took to explain it. Certainly less time than it would take to pry your intern away from the coffee maker and send him to the patch bay with instructions. For this example, you would click the preview filter button on track 2's compressor and confirm that indeed you are triggering the compressor action from the kick drum. And you could set the high pass and low pass to taste as well to narrow it down a bit. Untick the preview filter button and set the ducking action you want by messing with the regular compressor controls. Start thinking about the possibilities. Draw a patch bay in your mind and let Reaper hook it up for you. Till next time, happy routing, finally.